Razer Viper V2 Pro versus the Logitech G Pro X Super Lite. There are a million videos already about it, but we will do something a little bit different. We will go through every feature one by one and keep score. So, for example, if the Super Lite has better mouse feet than the Viper V2 Pro, the Super Lite will get a one point. And then at the end of the video, we'll talk about the shape and which one I do recommend for what kind of hand size and grip style. Let's start with the clicks, and I have two Super Lights here. One is brand new, and one is used for about six months, and my Viper V2 Pro has been used for about a month. So the brand new Super Light has very tactile and snappy clicks, but these are actually quite heavy. And the old Super Light has way lighter clicks, and these are quite soft. Not as snappy as tactile, but better for gaming, in my opinion. The Viper V2 Pro clicks have burned in a little bit as well, so these are not as heavy as they used to be when I got the mouse. And these are pretty much just as spammable and light as on the old Super Light. And I actually quite like this click feeling, especially now that it's slightly worn in. And as the scroll wheel and the side buttons are actually much better in the V2 Pro than on the Super Lite. I will have to give the buttons or the clicks to the Razer Viper V2 Pro. Next up we got mouse feet and this is actually a fairly easy one. So the Super Lite has decent feet but these are not the best on rough surfaces and they are also quite thin. Whereas the Viper V2 Pro feet are much thicker, very good on pretty much any mouse pad. They easily win this category. So this one goes to the Viper V2 Pro as well and it already has two points. Then let's move over the performance and there is actually very small difference here. Viper V2 Pro has the new Razer sensor and it has the best wireless performance on the market at the moment. It has a very low motion latency and also very low click latency. The new Razer sensor is also much more compatible with any kind of surface, so you should not experience any kind of spin-outs on any surface that you can get with the Super Lite. On practice, you don't really feel the difference on a standard cloth pad, but the Razer Viper V2 Pro beats this category as well and it leads through you. When we are talking about wireless mice and as we just had performance, we should now go for battery life and that's of course something that the Super Lite beats the Razer Viper V2 Pro with these. It has possibly the best battery life out of all high performing wireless mice at the moment and the Viper V2 Pro really does not come that close. 3-1 to the Viper V2 Pro. Then we got build quality and we are looking for any kind of creaking shell flex or rattle and starting with the Viper V2 Pro initially it did not have any kind of creaking or shell flex but now it does have some creaking after about two months or month of use. So squeezing from the front does make some creaking sounds and there is also some rattle. Neither one happens in really use, so it's not a massive issue, but those are still there. The Super Light doesn't have any creaking whatsoever when squeezing the sides quite hard, but it does have some rattle. The Super Light has quite a bit more button wobble than the Viper V2 Pro. So this is not that easy to grade, but as the Viper V2 Pro still have some button wobble and neither actually has that happening in real use, I will have to give the build quality category to Super Light, so it's 3-2. Then we have the surface finish or the coating, and this is of course very subjective due to your skin type, but the Viper V2 Pro feels plastic and has this grainy finish, whereas the Super Light has this smooth matte finish, which is very creepy for me, and also feels quite premium, so this category will go easily to Super Light in my books. So we are fully drawn at 3 at the moment and we also have drivers that we could categorize but I think Synapse and G-Hop are both equally as good or equally as bad. Actually scratch that because Logitech does have the onboard memory manager which is basically a standalone application and you can configure everything you want from there and it's super simple and easy. Which means that the drivers and customization goes for the super light and it leads 3 to 4. Lastly, we got pricing and value, and these both started with the same MSRP. But these days, you can find the Super Light on sale quite often, and it also was available on Prime Day for 110 bucks. So the GPX wins 3 to 5. So without me talking about the shape or you knowing what you quite like, these are the categories that you need to choose from. So for example, if you want battery life over performance, you of course go for the Super Light. Or if you want your mouse to have good stock feet, you go for the Viper V2 Pro. The mouse clicks can be somewhat subjective, but I think that light and ease to actuate clicks are quite important for the responsive click feel. And playing at high level, the click should be responsive. Finally, we will talk about the shape a little bit, and I will give you my recommendations and my opinions on it. So the main the difference between these two mice is that the Viper V2 Pro is quite flat and it's actually surprisingly wide. There is more curvature on the side so the Viper V2 Pro flares out to the front and to the back of the mouse. Whereas the Super Light has more of a hump on the back of the mouse, 
It doesn't have any curves on the sides pretty much and the sides are quite flat. The hump makes it quite nice for a claw grip so you have some hand contact on the middle of your palm. Whereas with the Viper V2 Pro when you claw grip it there is mostly contact on the bottom of your palm. The Superlight is in my opinion very good if you have small to medium hands and you like any kind of relaxed grip. So for example relaxed claw or palm grip. It's also very good for an aggressive claw. But the one issue I and many other people have had with the Superlight is that it's really hard to find a consistent spot for your ring finger and your pinky while you're aggressing claw. The sides are just so flat and there is basically no curvature so it's really hard to find that recognizable place to put your fingers in. Compared to the Viper V2 Pro which has this massive flare in the middle and this is usually the spot that I hold my fingers in when I aggressive claw. But still once you find that consistent spot to hold your fingers in the super light is very good for aggressive claw for pretty much any hand size. One thing to note is that super light can feel quite thin for you if you have those large hands. The Viper v2 pro is very good for almost any kind of hand size if you use aggressive claw or even relaxed claw but you have to realize that the mouse is quite wide from the front with the wide back it also means that there is a lot of contact on the bottom of your palm for large hands the super light can be still very good for that claw style and fingertip grip but you won't be able to palm grip it properly same pretty much applies for the viper v2 pro so you're gonna have some troubles with palm gripping but that aggressive claw will feel very nice both of these are kind of medium sized in terms of length but the Viper V2 Pro especially can feel quite long even for my 19 times 10 centimeter hands and that's mainly because the back is so wide so I can't drive it deep towards my palm which I can do much easier with the super light so it rests deeper than the Viper V2 Pro so it really comes down to the fact that how flat profile would you want your mouse to be and how wide would you want it to be optimally. Fingertip grip is usable on both of these shapes, but I would recommend for your hand size to be at least medium or large for it to be good on a mouse in this size category. I personally enjoy the smaller and more thinner x 5 M42 much more for fingertip grip, although it's higher in weight. I think that if you use claw grip and you have that medium or large size hand and you give enough time for either one of these shapes, you should like them. For some people it might be one to two weeks and for others it might be two months. Both of the shapes are quite safe which means that they suit multiple hand sizes and grip styles but at the same time if you have found something that you really love or you love small mice these most likely are not something that you prefer out of the box. As an example, if the Xtrofy M42 or the Starlight 12 Small are your favorite mice, you most likely won't enjoy either one of these at the start. These are the two best mice out at the moment, so you might actually give them that time and see if you can enjoy them long term. I did not enjoy the Superlight when I started, and I did not enjoy the Razer Viper shape when I started with that, but I do enjoy both of them now. Just not quite as much as the M42. Check out the Superlight review right there and the Viper V2 Pro review right there and some other reviews right here. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you enjoy my content, hit that subscribe button and see you in the next one.